This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are doing something slightly different. I'm going to be away in Las Vegas, but I want to get an episode up if I could, and we are playing a rotation-proof standard deck. This is Mono Red Cavalcade rotation-proof version, which means every single card in this deck, unless I messed something up, and I don't think I did because I double-checked, but every single card in this deck should be good to go after rotation. So if you put this deck together now, it's still going to be legal a month from now after Throne of Eldraine comes, rotation happens. Uh, so ideally, if you're playing on a budget, part of the way that you can make sure that you are conserving your resources and playing as cheaply as possible is making sure you're ready for rotation and not holding cards through rotation, uh, building decks in preparation for rotation. So this, I think, is a sweet option for not just now, but also should be even better after rotation happens. So I'm really excited to show this one off. I should also say, Monterey Cavalcade, not 100% original blue. The deck has kind of been floating around. I saw a 5-0 finish with a similar deck on Magic Online, but I did the like rotation proofing of the deck. So I didn't sit down and build this 100% from scratch, but did make sure it was rotation proof, made some changes to make sure they would be good to go through rotation. Also, also, also wanted to mention it's like 12 rares, I think, on Magic Arena. So not only budget in paper and on Magic Online, but really cheap on Arena as well. And four of those rares are four experimental frenzies into the sideboard. So if you're playing best of one, it's like eight rares, zero mythics. So cheap now, good now, cheap later, good later, surviving rotation. And uh, yeah, a quick reminder before we break down rotation proof mono red Kevil Glade for standard. If you enjoy this deck and you enjoy budget magic in general, it would be amazing of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Mono Red Cavalcade, starting with Cavalcade of Glamity. Basically, two mana enchantment, when we attack with a creature with one or less power, we get to deal damage to whatever we're attacking, if it's our opponent or a planeswalker. And the idea of this deck is we are going to really just play a bunch of one-powered creatures and go to town with Cavalcade, the most exciting part of this deck. And the reason this Cavalcade deck is so much more powerful than the last one is Chandra Spitfire, which is basically like a two-card combo with Cavalcade. So Spitfire it gets plus three, plus zero, along with being a one-three flyer, but gets plus three, plus zero whenever opponent takes non-combat damage. Cavalcade, that's non-combat damage, so if we get down Spitfire with some random one-drops in attack, we're getting all these Cavalcade triggers, and each of those Cavalcade triggers are not just damaging our opponent, but giving our Spitfire plus three, plus zero, so it's really easy with this deck to go, like, one-drop on turn one, Cavalcade turn two, Chandra Spitfire turn three, something with hasty one-drops on turn four, and just hit for, like, 15 damage out out of the blue with Spitfire suddenly being like massive, like 13 power, just something insane in the air. So that's kind of our combo finish. We also have just a bunch of good one drops to go with Cavalcade. Footlight Fiend, just a one mana one one when it dies, we get to ping something for one, another source of non-combat damage. Scorch Bitter, again, more non-combat damage. It's a one one for one, but it pings for one when it attacks, so it kind of stacks. It's like, it almost has its own Cavalcade built into it. So if we have Cavalcade and Scorch Bitter, we get a ping from Scorch Bitter, a ping from Cavalcade, and the Scorch Bitter damage. So it's like two pings for our Shender Spitfire. Ten Street Dodger, just a two of, but it's hasty, getting damage out of nowhere, and it can be unblockable for the most part, since there's not many defenders running around. Then we have kind of our big finishers later in the game. Legion Warboss just makes a steady stream of 1-1s, and then we can even pump them if we want to, so really good with Cavalcade. One Scabbery Scorcher, a little expensive for our 19 land deck, but it is three 1-1s, and they're hasty, so a ton of damage out of nowhere with Cavalcade. Then we have Chandra Acolyte of Flame, which is insane in this deck. So since we care so much about 1-1s, Chandra making two hasty 1-1s is really strong. It makes a ton of damage out of nowhere, gets a bunch of triggers with Cavalcade, Cavalcade, pumps our Spitfire, etc, etc. Also allows us to flash back a bunch of spells. We also have Mask of Emulation, which is a 1-1, and it works really well with Chandra in specific, and like our Footlight Fiend, but basically comes into play as a 1-1. So it works with Cavalcade. We can sack whatever it's equipping to deal a damage to something, so that's a source of non-combat damage to trigger our Chandra Spitfire, and if the game goes long, and we need a couple extra points of damage to close things out, we can, like, make Chandra tokens, attack with them, then move the mask to them 
because they're going to sacrifice anyway to ping our opponent a couple of times. So it gives us some late game repeatable damage, which is really nice. The other thing Chandra does is works well with our spells. Shock, Heartfire give us ways to deal with creatures in the early game and can go face in the late game. Heartfire in specific, really insane with this deck. Four damage for two mana, really good. Yes, we got a sack of creature, but we have Chandra tokens. We have Footlight Fiend. We got plenty of random creatures to sacrifice, which makes Heartfire really consistent in this deck. Otherwise, light up the stage, our last spell to work with Chandra, uh, and it's pretty good. We can spectacle it very consistently, generates card advantage, then we can even flash it back with Chandra to draw more cards, and that's basically the plan of the deck. Play Cavalcades, hopefully have a Chandra Spitfire or two, make a bunch of 1-1s, one get in a bunch of damage, close out the game with Burn or Mask of Immolation. Mana base-wise, 19 mountains, about as simple and cheap as it gets. Sideboard, also very simple and cheap. Four cards total, four Experimental Frenzies for the control matchup for card advantage. Tibble kind of goes two different directions. It's good against control as a just Planeswalker generates value. We can maybe add loyalty to it with Chandra, makes a couple one ones. Also good against life gain, and life gain is really good against our deck. Uh, like Hydroid Crosses, our opponent spending their turn casting a Crosses isn't the end of the world because we're good at going wide, but if our opponent can gain like five life off a of Crosses or have something else, uh, Oath of Kaya to gain life, those cards can be really rough on our deck because they keep our opponent just out of range of die to our Cavalcade and our burn spells. Otherwise, four fries to deal with. Blue Planeswalkers primarily. Also some creatures. Hits crosses. Hits a lot of stuff, actually. Lava Coils to answer what we need to answer, and that is rotation-proof mono-red cavalcade for standard. And that's our budget magic deck for this week. So, we're gonna get aggro. See how this works. The one last thing I want to mention is, uh, in general, I'm pretty happy with this build of the deck. There are a few changes you can make pre-rotation, like Fanatical Firebrand might be better than Footlight Fiend. Uh, uh, Blood Sun is a good scapeshift answer in the sideboard, but those are cards that are rotating, so I didn't want to include them. So especially like the scapeshift matchup, it's a little bit unbalanced because scapeshift's going to rotate. So scapeshift won't be a deck after rotation, but we don't get to play Blood Sun because Blood Sun is rotating. So we're like at a slight disadvantage in some ro uh, matchups right now because of the post-rotation aspect, but... It's not a huge deal, and really, like, rotation is only a few months away, so uh, just keep that in mind. If you do have, like, Blood Suns in your collection, a couple in the sideboard would be good. You could replace, like, Footlight Fiend with Fanatical Firebrand uh, for the next four weeks or whatever leading up to rotation. I think it makes the deck very slightly better, but this build, as I think we will hopefully see in the videos, is pretty solid right now and theoretically gets even better after rotation when instead of having eight sets in standard, we'll have five sets in standard, and this deck doesn't lose anything while all of the most powerful decks in standard are at least losing something and some of them are just dying like scapeshift just won't be a deck anymore so even though we're at a little disadvantage right now because we're restricting our card pool compared to everyone else uh, we're also setting ourselves up for the future and if this deck is good now it should be even better after rotation like i said because we don't lose anything while everyone else is losing something so anyway that's rotation proof mono red cavalcade that's our budget magic for this week thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoy it and i I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some rotation proof mono red cavalcade in standard and uh, yeah, see how it goes. Gotta get ready for rotation. It is not far away now, just uh, over a month, around a month until rotation happens. So having some decks that are pretty much good to go after rotation, especially budget ones. Nice little upside. Uh, this hand looks pretty good. One drops, Cavalcade, Heartfire for damage. We'll keep. Thornwood Falls, one it gains a life. Well, land and, um, yeah, let's just Dodger. Get him for one. Opponent, down to 20. So it looks like Scape Shift. Opponent plays the tap land. Well, play a land, go to combat, attack. Opponent on 19, play Footlight Feed. Play Footlight Feed. Next turn, we can start loading up on the Cavalcade damage. Four is for our opponent. Elvish Rejuvenator. Yup. Gets a land. Ooh, war boss. Hmm. So I think what we do here is play Cavalcade. Shock Rejuvenator. Go attacking. Opponent. Down to 13 past the turn. Tap land. Deputy of Detention, gonna snag our Footlight Fiends, unfortunately. Huh. Well, play Legion War Boss. Megador, go attacking. Opponent down to 12. 
we go. Tap land. Uh, all right, go to combat. Make a door. Get in. Ping our opponent. Heart fire. Sacking the token. Get back our foot light fiends. Pass the turn. Uh, we left points of damage on the table. We should have been attacking with Dodger there too. Hmm, 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 hmm. Opponent, tap land. Escape shift. So here comes the zombies. Can we win through the zombies? That is the question. The answer is maybe. Our hope is this Spitfire. Unfortunately, our opponent's probably gonna get to gain some life and scry too. Yep. Get some zombies. Oh, the blast zone. Why is that untapped? Huh. Why does it have two counters? What is going on? Opponent passes. Well, play Spitfire. Play a mountain. Dodge. Make a door. Attack, attack. Opponent. Oh, now it's back to one counter. Opponent blocks. Drops to 10. Also gonna be close. If they can kill our Spitfire, we're probably done. Then kill our one drops. Tap land. Zombie. Scoops it up. Okay, we got there. Unpunished, unpunished through the scape shift. And that is Spitfire and Calamity. Uh, it's what you call a combo. Combo good enough to overcome our punting. <laughs> Even. Okay. So one of the awkward parts about building this post-rotation list is uh, scape shift won't be a deck after rotation. But the hate cards like Blood Sun or Alpine Moon that we could play to beat scape shift are also not gonna be a thing after rotation. So uh, basically it's a little bit unfair footing in this matchup. We don't get to play Blood Sun or Alpine Moon out of the sideboard uh, because those cards are rotating, but our opponent still gets to scape shift because their deck is not rotation proof. Uh, not a complaint, just something to keep in mind that in theory, if you're playing this deck before rotation, you can play a couple of sideboard cards that are pretty good in the matchup like Blood Sun. Ooh, all right, I like this hand. One drop Calamity War Boss, light up the stage. Also don't mind our opponent shocking themselves. Down to 18, plays the land. Well, Footlight Fiend, go. Uh, opponent. Grazer is a good blocker. Land. And Rejuvenator, yup. There's a field of the dead. Opponent passes. Well, land cavalcade. Um, no attacks. Not really worth trading yet. Oh boy. Zombies are coming. This is a good start for the scape shift deck. If they have a land, they get zombie one. All right, no land yet. So we, let's see. Play the land. Shock rejuvenator. Play dodger. Go to combat. Attack. Trigger, trigger. Opponent blocks. Well, light up the stage. Pass the turn. Land, life gain, zombie. Do they also have scape shift? Night of autumn, ew. Well, that's not scape shift, but it's still pretty bad for us. Very bad for us. And a Teferi. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Bounces Knight of Autumn for more value in the future. Well, play Chandra. Anyone need a match? No. Make one ones. Hey, these little guys are great. Yeah, attack to fairy. Blocks, blocks. To fairy dies. I suppose that's how it happens. Zombie dies. But there's always more zombies once the field of the dead hits the battlefield. Yeah, this is where Blood Sun would be helpful, or Alpine Moon. Opponent leaves it on top. Growth Spiral. And... Rejuvenator. Dole. All right, gets planes, makes a zombie. We draw a mountain. Can we do anything relevant? Well, I guess we have to Chandra for shock. Shock our opponent's face. We'll light up the stage land scorch splitter I mean I guess our main hope is to burn our opponent out somehow this night of autumn is gonna make it hard uh, opponent 
There's a Knight of Autumn. Back up to 18. Yeah. And to Fairy Part 2. I'm known for my excellent timing. Picks up Knight of Alright. Yeah. Too much life gain. Too many zombies. Not enough blood zones. <laughs> uh hmm. Maybe the frenzy plan is wrong. Maybe maybe we should be trying to be aggressive. Let's bring in Tibalts and leave in the mask of immolation. I think rather than trying to play the long game. Uh I don't know why we started already, but okay. That was definitely not two minutes. Well, we get to play first. I don't know if our sideboard worked or not. Alright, well, I mean, this sounds fine. We got a Spitfire. We need a Cavalcade for the Wombo Combo. We're on the play, which is nice. Light up the stage could find us our missing piece. Still not sure what happened with sideboarding. I'm pretty sure I did not click submit, because we had 61 cards. <laughs> but, uh, we'll take it, I guess. Scorch Putter, go. Opponent. Scryland. To the top. Well, go to combat. Attack. Ping, hit, corner down to 18, light up the stage with spectacle. Eh, play a mountain, play a foot light feed. And pass the turn, no cavalcade, but the one drops are coming. Uh, opponent. Ooh, shocking themselves to 16. Well, I mean, we're going aggro, play a land, war boss. Opponent grows spirals, draws a card. Gains a life, 17. Well, we go to combat. Get in with everything. Opponent, 60, 13. No sweepers, no sweepers. No sweepers, please. Opponent, gains a life with the Tranquil Cove. Plays a Rejuvenator to make a blocker. We also have this Spitfire. All right, opponent, Field of the Dead. Well, War Boss, part two. Play a land. Opponent scoops it up. Got him. All right, all right, all right. Sometimes you draw the war bosses and you get there without the cavalcade and even with the handicap of being uh, not having all the sideboard cards for the matchup because of our post rotation build taking out scape shift that's the way you do it sweet sweet all right budget magic time we are playing some rotation proof Ew. not mulligan proof rotation proof mono red cavalcade well all right Chandra Spitfire got to go bottom here Land, um, yeah, I think we got a Scorch Spitter because we got to get in damage next turn for this light up the stage. Oh, we draw a land. That makes it easy. We'll play a mountain, play a dodger. Go to combat. Uh, attack. Opponent. Down to 17. Light up the stage with spectacle. Eh, all right, light up the stage mountain. Could be worse. Opponent, Thought Erasure. Can take Spitfire or Heartfire. Thankfully, light up the stage. Hiding away in the Exile Zone. Takes a Spitfire. Mills the land. Ooh, that's not bad. Play the land, play Cavalcade. Go attack it. Hit our opponent for 5 down to 12. The triggers add up. Light up the stage part 2. Full life in mountain, pass the turn. Opponent's down to 12 here on turn three. We're getting in the damage. Opponent plays a land. Oath of Kaya is one of their best cards. That's a good draw, though. Mountain, Foot Light Fiend, Chandra. Make a bunch of 1 1s. Power kind of being doubled by this cavalcade. Opponent. Down to 12, down to 9, and we still have a Heartfire in hand, and we have a Cavalcade, and we have a Chandra. Looking good for a possible kill next turn. Opponent's going to need something pretty spectacular. Ooh. Well, Bell Haunt is pretty spectacular, I will say. Well, Chandra, make Elementals. So if we attack with everything, let's think about this. We attack with everything. Opponent drops to 6. All right, I think what we do is go to combat, attack. Get our triggers. Heartfire. Kill Bellhaunt. Opponent. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. 5. Elemental goes away. All right, opponent. Tap land. Bellhaunt part 2 trying to stay in the world of the living. Up to 8. Let's see what we draw. Mountain. 
Well, let's, uh, let's dodge. Make one ones. Say hi to my fiery friends. Go attacking. Opponent goes to four. Goes to one. Oh, that's the way you die. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if they block here, they die. Yep, blocks. Down to one. All right, pass the turn. Elementals go away. Lad for our opponent. Narset. Okay. Needs to hit, I guess, an Oath of Kaya to stay alive, maybe? Hits an Oath of Kaya. Wow, it's a hit. That is a hit. Plays the Oath of Kaya. Actually, I don't think this works. If our opponent leaves Chandra, we just heart fire. If they attack Chandra, we make elementals. All right, so uh, Chandra for heart fire. Heart fire your face. Whoo, okay. Opponent had gained nine life. Nine life with their Esper control deck, and it wasn't enough? Like, we just, we got through that. Two bell haunts. Actually, no, 12 life? Do they have two Oath of Kaya's? 12 life was gained, and we still crushed them. That is the power of Cavalcade. Ugh. Sideboarding here is a little tricky. Fry deals with Planeswalkers and Bellhaunts. We probably gotta cut, like, Scorcher, Mask of Immolation. Experimental Frenzy also seems important, and Tybalt seems helpful with all the life gain. So maybe we trim a Chandra, trim a couple Dodgers? Ugh. Heartfire. Ugh, let's try it like that. Two fries? Actually, let's go down to shock for a fry. Let's go three fries. Three of all the burn. All right, run it like that. We're on the draw for game two. I mean, our recipe for success is what we saw in game one. Get in there quick before our opponent has a chance to take over because they have a lot of life gain, although they had a lot of life gain last game, and we were still able to take it down, which was pretty impressive. All right, opponent, let's see it. Let's see it. Ooh, all right, we're gonna keep. No one drop. Land go. Two war bosses could be good though. And the fries do deal with some problems. Blue opponent shocks themselves. Well, let's cavalcade. Three war bosses. <laughs> cavalcade has been vetoed. Land for our opponent, passes. Well, mountain, war boss. Mega one one. Get in there. Tap land, Oath of Gaia. Yup. Well, there's more where that came from. More boss. Combat. Door. All attack. Pwn it back down to 18 thanks to the Othakaya life gain. Okay, devout decree to take down war boss number two to the top. Legion's ends are tokens. Man, opponents have the answers for days. Well, Legion war boss. Number three. Make it door. All attack. I'm assuming our opponent left a land on top to play maybe five mana Teferi. All right, opponent passes. Well, go to combat, make a dork. All attack. Grow the dork. Opponent to 12. Foot life feed. Pass the turn. We might be able to win next turn. Opponent plays a land. Narset. That's not really a huge concern. Double heart fire is 12 points of damage. That is... A lot of damage. Opponent goes digging. Cast down. Well, heart fire your face. Sack war boss. Down to eight. Untap. Combat. I think we got him. I think we got him. To the face. Opponent. Down to three. Or down to four. Heart fire number two equals four damage. Sack it. Game. Whoo. Got him. Got him. Got him. And, uh, yeah, if you want to be ready for rotation, this is looking like a sweet option. All right, taking him down. So far, uh, this deck has been sweet. Took down Scapeshift and then took down Esper Control. Those are two expensive, powerful decks. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some rotation proof. Mono Red Cavalcade for standard. And, uh, yeah. Give it a shot. This hand, eh, all right. I wish we had a one drop, wish we had a cavalcade, but we got some power. Land go. Ooh, green, white. All right, could be escape shift, could be like tokens. Could be bat ramp. Opponent, passing. Eh, all right, scorch spitter. Mountain, go. Land number four for our opponent. Drawn from dreams, okay. Gotta get those cards. 
It uh, draws to you. Don't have passes. We'll play the land. Ugh. What's our best play here? Yeah, let's just Chandra. Make elementals. No, Get in for play. four. Pwn it down to 60. Uh, opponent. Land number five. And... Do we have a big Teferi? Pwn it passes, all right. Well, play a land. Make elementals. Play Cavalcade. Opponent counters. Cavalcade 2. Go attacking. Give some triggers. Alright, Scorch Spitter goes to the top. Opponent still down to 13. And we still have Chandra Cavalcade going. Opponent undepths. Land. Crossus. Alright. Hmm. So this can kill our Chandra. Opponent's at 15. Well, let's just Chandra Spitfire. Scorch Spitter. Make dorks. Say hi to my fire Go attacking. Face. Opponent down to 13. Down to 12. This opens up the potential for a combo kill with Spitfire next turn. Eh, Alright. Well, that's going to take away the potential for the combo kill with Spitfire. Opponent yeah, blocks. Or bounces, rather. Kill Chandra. Hits us. Drawn from Dreams Part 2. Hmm. Uh, play Legion War Boss. Go to combat. Make a dork. Everything at our opponent. Down to seven. Pass the turn. Oh, this is close. Ticks up. Oh, this is so close. Grow Spiral draws a card. Feels a little desperate. Feel a little desperate. Opponent puts a land into play. Another land into play. Wilderness Wreck. Oh, that's not great. Gonna flip some mana. Untap. Chemistry's Insight draws two. Passes. I don't go to combat. Mega Dork. Everything at our opponent. Get a bunch of triggers. Grow the Dork. Settle the Wreckage. Oh no! Wow! We're a point of damage short. Oh, that's that's not good. Well, play Spitfire. Pass the turn. Whoa! Grow Spiral. Wow, we needed one more point of damage. All of our creatures going away means we couldn't heart fire. Opponent ticks up. Big Teferi. I mean, there's still a hope that we can burn our opponent out, but it's scary. And our opponent has counters. And our opponent has a lot of cards. Chemister's Insight. Discards a land, draws two more. Untaps. Gonna flip some mana by the looks. Yup. Grow Spiral draws a card. Puts a land into play. Can we close it out with a burn? That is the question. Opponent passes. Well, play Chandra. Opponent has a veto. Us to Fairy's actually an issue. Play Cavalcade. Go to combat. Attack. Trigger, trigger. Opponent blocks at one. Shock, please. Oh, it's a frilled mystic. Oh my god. Oh, we. Oh, this Teferi. The Teferi is ruining it. We could have sacked our creature to Heartfire to had two bird spells. But that Teferi, the sorcery speedness, is really wrecking us. Put it, untaps, draws, land. Yeah, three mana Teferi is, is really ruining our... Oh, crosses for 10. Yeah, and that does it. Wow, we were so close. Untaps all the lands. Yeah. Ugh. Opponent. Chemistry's Insight, draws some cards. Yeah, we can't get in six point man. Well, three mana to fairy, pretty busted. Pretty busted. Hi, yi, 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 yi. All right, well. Yeah, it's tough. That's a tough one. Mm, 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 mm.
All right, so bring in Tybalt to shut down the life gain. Bring in some frenzies and probably some fries. Go down the masks. Go down Heartfire. Probably cut the shocks. Maybe one Chandra because it lines up really poorly with Teferi. Three mana Teferi stops the flashback. All right, give it a... Man, we were so close. Oh, maybe there was something I did wrong there. I don't know. I'm sure you'll I'm sure you let me know in the comments. But we were super close to closing that out. Super, super close. So we're on the play for game number two, which is good. Uh, one land's so risky. We're going to ship it. All right. I mean, I guess this is better-ish, although it's still slow. We'll put Heartfire to the bottom. Land go. Nothing until turn three is not ideal. Ooh, that's a draw. 10 Street Dodger. That's very good. Because this lets us get in and also light up the stage. So hit our opponent. Light up the stage. Cavalcade Tybalt, ew. All right, opponent, Bazin. Uh, play land, go to combat, attack. Hit our opponent, Tybalt. Opponent, grow spirals, getting their ramp on. Yup. Well, make a 1-1, one -one. pass the turn. Uh, opponent, Teferi. Bounces the token. Yup. <laughs> yeah, let's play Chandra. Not to brag, but I'm totally the student. Make elementals. Say hi to my fiery play a land, Scorch Spitter. Combat. Kill to fairy, hit our opponent. Only time will tell. Mega one one. Pass the turn. My friend is here. I mean we're off to a decent start. Shalai. Ooh, that's Cavalcade, though. Play Cavalcade. Make one ones. Get him, Dodge. Go attacking. Get a bundle of triggers. Opponent down to ten. Yup, down to six. All right, opponent needs like a sweeper, I think. Opponent. Thankfully, Cavalcade does not care about hexproof. It just hits. The defending player planeswalker so shalai doesn't do much opponent to fairy okay bounces the token yep land opponent needs more than that though opponent gets in at chandra sure down to one passes well make elementals play a war boss combat an opponent scoops it up all right well, our deck is good at punishing people if they stumble at all. If you don't have a fast start, Cavalcade is coming for you and coming quick. <sighs> Change anything? Frenzy. How good is Frenzy? Eh, all right. Keep it like that. Keep three Frenzies. That's fine. So we got to be on the draw here for game three, which probably makes it harder. Definitely makes it harder. But if we can get off to a fast start. Well, okay. We got one drops for days. Well, land Scorch Spitter. This is a hand that would love a Cavalcade. Land for our opponent. And main phase is a Grow Spiral. And a land. Now play the Mountain. Scorch Spitter. Full Light Fiend. Go attacking. Opponent down to 18. Well, now we would really like a land. Land would be helpful. Opponent, land untapped. Wilderness Reclamation. Gonna start doubling up that mana. Untapped. Passes. That is a land. We'll play the land. Chandra. Opponent absorbs back up to 19. Well, go attack it. Hit our opponent. For actually kind of a lot. Down to 14. Untap. What do you got, opponent? Grow spiral. Do they hit a land? They do. Land. Kills one of our dorks. And scries. Ooh, to the top. Eh, we don't like that. Well, go to combat. Attack. Opponent down to 11. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a land, two cards in hand. What are they? Hydroid Crosses draws a couple cards. All right, well, the card draw is bad, but we do get to kill a Crosses. Opponent gets to untap their lands. Well, play Cavalcade. Opponent found a veto, two cards in hand still. Go attacking, hit our opponent down to 10. Untaps, what do they have? Land. 
Oh, they keep coming. Cross is part two. Untaps the lads. Well, fry the crosses. Go attacking. Opponent down to nine. Scorch spitter. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Time wipe. Ugh, down to eight, but we lose our board. Oh, double crosses is asking a lot. Opponent untaps. Well, there's a land. There's a frenzy. Do you got a counter? No. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. I don't think we can take crosses part three. Opponent passes. Untaps. Mountain. Oh, please not another mountain. Light up the stage. Um, hmm. Do we want this frenzy? I'm not sure that we do. Eh, I guess we have to. All right, yeah, we'll take it. On top. Play Cavalcade. Pass the turret. Land for our opponent. Passes. Uh, play the frenzy. Ugh, to fairy. Bounces frenzy, draws a card. Plays a land, untaps. Well, play Tibble. Make a 1 1. Pass the turn. Oh, come on. No crosses, is, no crosses, is. Lyra Dawnbringer. Ticks up. Let's try this. And Devout Decree. Well, opponent's officially out of action, but we're not in the greatest of places either. Untaps. Chandra. All right, so we. Oh, this isn't bad. So we get to Heartfire. Target Lyra. Sack the token. The token also will target Lyra. Chandra. Make dorks. Opponent's got one draw step. One draw step. Kill Teferi. Hit our opponent. Trigger, trigger. Teferi down. Come on. Whiff, 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 whiff. We should be able to close it out if our opponent whiffs. Opponent, what's their draw? Teferi. That's a redraw. Come on. Come on, whiff, whiff, whiff. Bounces our cavalcade. Wilderness wreck. Okay, that doesn't kill us. Opponent passes. Can we finish it off? Chandra Spitfire. So replay cavalcade. Make elementals. Go to combat. Everything at our opponent. Trigger, trigger. Down to four. Light up the stage. Come on, give us a point of damage. Cavalcade. Mountain. All right, this is it. Opponents hit two. One more draw. What do they hit? What do they hit? Not a crosses. Not a crosses. Not a crosses. Ticks up. Oh, I've done the hero thing. Dawn of Hope. That doesn't do it, though. That doesn't do it. Opponent can make a ton of dorks, but we kill our opponent before damage resolves. We kill him with cavalcade triggers. Oh, and we got there. Opponent, yeah, make a million. Make them all. Opponent passes. Well, yeah, we make two elementals. We go to combat, we attack our opponent, we get a bunch of cavalcade triggers, and before blocks happen, opponent is dead. One, zero, no life linking blockers, and we fought through, and this post-rotation deck still getting it done. All right, uh, seems good. I mean, if this deck is killing people pre-rotation, imagine how much better it'll get post-rotation when we have like half the sets in standard. Whew. Sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are playing some post-rotation Mono Red Cavalcade. All cards still legal after rotation. Ooh, we'll keep this. Temple of Epiphany. We'd rather have one drops and double shocks, but this hand has a lot of late game potential. Two Spitfires with Calamity can do a lot of damage out of nowhere. Uh, opponent. Tap land. And passing. I'll play the land, play Cavalcade. Pass the turn. Opponent grow spirals. Yeah. So teamer reclamation, I assume. Oh, ho oh, oh. ho. Some spice. A lotus field. Well, play the mountain, play Chandra Spitfire. Pass the turn. Next turn could be pretty good, depending on what our opponent has. Bloodsa. <laughs> little, little late. A little late with the blood sub. Opponent plays land. Ops. All right. Well, how much damage can we do this turn? We can do a lot. Mask of Emulation. Well, play Chandra. Make some one ones. Go attacking. Get a few cavalcade triggers. 
which gives us a few Spitfire triggers and means our opponent is taking 15 damage this turn? 15. That is a lot of damage. Opponent, Lotus Field number two. So lots of mana. Can they just go off? I mean, if they have like Wilderness Wreck, Nexus of Fades, they, we could just never get another turn. There's Wilderness Wreck. Well, that's step one. Opponent pass it. Yeah, that might not be enough. Boy, we got a lot of damage, but it might be just, just short of actually closing out the game. Still, I mean, that shows you the power. Three mana we just hit for 15. Opponent, do you have a Nexus? Floating mana, that's for sure. It is blue mana, which is Nexus colors. That's a Nexus. All right. Well, now we hope our opponent fizzles. Opponent untaps. Tamiya. Ticks up. Whips on Nexus. Blood Sun Part 2 draws a card. I mean, if our opponent does not draw Nexus, we win. Plays a land. Untaps. Do they seriously have another one? Oh, is this just living the dream? Oh, it's just living the dream. Okay. Well, now they probably have us. Oh. Well. Ha. Huh. Whips on Nexus. Plays a land. Passes. Okay. Well, we will make two elementals. We will go to combat. Root Snare is not going to save our opponent here. All attack our opponent. Get in for three with Cavalcade. Shock our opponent for two. Oh, okay. We survived. Opponent got a couple turns in a row, but another upside of Cavalcade does not really care about Root Snare. <laughs> uh, bad news is, other than just killing our opponent quickly, we don't really have a much of a sideboard plan for this matchup. I guess we could bring in like a couple fries to kill Tamios, but there's there's not much of a of a plan other than just killing our opponent. <laughs> Kill it, just attack, attack, attack. Hope that our opponent dies before they go infinite. Or that they fizzle. I mean, our opponent did a little fizzling there. The Blood Sun Lotus Field plan is interesting. Opponent was going off with just three lands. Although, I mean, I guess the upside is you get to play Blood Sun main deck to fight against Scape Shift decks. That's something. I don't know if it's worth it. Blood Sun is really good against Scape Shift, but they can answer it. So it's not, it's not like a guarantee. It's not like... <laughs> like Blood Moon in Modern or something, where you just stick it against some decks and they just literally lose on the spot. Blood Sun against Scape Shift, not quite that level of good. It's good, but answerable. All right, so we're on the draw for game number two. Ooh, all right, we're going to keep. We're going to keep and lean on this light up the stage to hit our lands. Land, Spitter, you. This hand's really good as long as we get our land drops. Tap land for our opponent. Well, go to combat. Attack. Paying our opponent. Hit him down to 18. Light up the stage. We gotta hit at least one land here. Ugh. Oh, no. Hey. Okay. There's a blood sun. Not, oh boy. Oh dear. Oh dear God. All right, well, get in. Well, it was a risky keep. We were pretty much trusting that light up the stage was gonna save us, but. <laughs> All right, maybe we just got one land at the top 14. Well, that's that's not going to cut it. <laughs> Whew. I mean, we do only have 19 lands in the deck, so it's not like we're a land-heavy deck, but still, that's, that's a little brutal. I think I'd keep it again, honestly. I know I get yelled at for one-landers, but one-lander light up the stage. With a one drop, like you gotta trust. If you're hitting three cards, you should be hitting a land. Tamio. Gets a nexus. Not a land. Oh my god. All right. Well, footlight beam. Go attacking. Pulling down to twelve. Wilderness. Right. All right. We're going to concede. In this game, uh, in this situation, we know there's a Tamio and a nexus. And we don't have anywhere close to lethal, even if we do draw, even if we do uh, get another turn there. We still don't win the game. We just kind of, I don't play a one drop because <laughs> we missed our, our land. So yeah, that was a little brutal. That was a little brutal.
Magic Gods were not pleased with that with that match or that game. Good news is we're on the play for game three, and that's where we want to be with this deck. On the play, this deck gets even scarier. Like with a good draw, I think we can just hopefully kill Nexus before they get to start doing their thing. Or get far enough ahead at least where, like we saw in game one, where if they they have to try to go off early, and if they fizzle at all, then we get to win on the next attack step. All right, we'll play first. And, all right. Well, this is a powerful draw, but it's a draw that doesn't really start doing much until turn three, unfortunately, which is a little slower than we'd like to be against Nexus. Like, on turn three, we get to start doing pretty good things, but land go. I guess we could, if we don't draw anything, we could shock light up the stage next turn. I'm not even sure that's worth it, though. We don't really have answers to our opponent's deck. Our answer is killing them before they combo. We don't have any way of interacting. Opponent, tap land, passes. We draw mountain. Ugh, all right, land go. I'm gonna hold off on the light up the stage because we have stuff to play next turn anyway. Tap land for our opponent and passing. Chandra part two. Well, play a land, play a Chandra. Make some one ones. Totally Get in. Opponent down to 18. Another tap land for our opponent. So they're off to a slow start, but so are we. Uh, all right, what's our way of doing this? Let's make Chandra tokens. To my fiery Legion War boss. Mountain. Go to combat. Make a door. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to 15. Light up the stage. All right, opponent counters. Light up the stage. All right, opponent, what do you got? Untap land. Tamio. Okay. Probably looking for root snare. Misses. Huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Wow. All right, make elementals. Go to combat. Everything at our opponent. Grow a goblin. I think we're one point off of killing our opponent. Oh wait, no, we have exactly enough to kill our opponent. Just kidding, shock you. Shock you. Heart fire you. And uh, yeah, okay, uh, that works, that works. Now to zero. And uh, we might go undefeated with this deck. Playing a post-rotation budget deck and pre-rotation standard and just crushing them, crushing them. All right, uh, ranking up, one more to go. Let's even keep it going, sweet. All right. Budget magic time. One more shot with mono red post rotation cavalcade. And so far, so good for this deck. So far, this deck's been pretty impressive. Man, we'll keep this. We're on the draw, but we gotta light up the stage. Got one drop, Scott Chandra. Don't have a cavalcade, but all right, see what our opponent's doing. Escape shift. Well, land. Land and Scorch Spitter. Pass the turn. Lots of escape shift float. Oh, maybe this isn't escape shift. Yeah, it probably still is. Opponent temple, scries to the top. Well, go to combat, attack. Opponent down to 20, down to 19. Let's light up the stage. Play land, play dodger. Pass the turn. is a little awkward, but. Uh, play a land, go to combat, attack. Opponent, 18, 17, 16. Footlight feet. Heart fire you. Zach Footlight. Opponent, 50. 11. Only three lands. If we can get them low enough before Scape Shift stuff comes online. Opponent plays a tap land. Well, we will play a land, play a Chandra. Make some elementals. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent, 10, 6, pass the turn. I mean, in theory, double heart fire next turn should close it out, right? I think. Swamp. Yarok. Well, double heart fire it is. Opponent passes. Now well, we will flashback heart fire. Go and face. Sack Dodger. Heartfire to the face. Sack spitter. And yeah, I mean, 
The Yarok was here, but we got in enough fast damage that it didn't matter. Ooh, Yarok is really good against our deck, too. Yarok, the Life Lake. The Life Lake is so good, but we just run him over? Ran him over? Okay. Yarok is a concern, though. That is a concern. We might have to, huh, go down Scorcher, go down Mask of Immolation, go up the Tibalts, and then we might need some fries. Maybe trim, like, a couple Shocks and one Chandra. Because we do need to be able to answer Yarok. Unless we just get a draw like we had last game, where we get so far ahead uh, that it doesn't matter. But if our opponent's not dead when Yarok comes down, it is something that just beats us. Not even from the Panharmonicon value, as much as just the being a 3-5 lifelink. Pretty good against our deck. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. All right, opponent's on the play for game number two, which at least means we're on the play for three if we don't win this one. And we won last time on the draw, I believe. The Yarok deck is sweet, though. Um, okay, we'll keep it. Not insane, but we got a Fry, so we can answer a Yarok. We got a one drop, and Tybalt's nice, too. All right, and a Chandra. All right, full life go. The only downside of this hand is we don't really do anything next turn. Cavalcade would be sweet. Just cavalcade off the top for next turn. Hey, look at that. That is that is the card we were asking for, cavalcade. Go attacking. Ping, down to 19. The other good thing about cavalcade is it lets us get through the zombies. Like, our opponent can block, but we can still just kill our opponent. I'll well, play a land, play, hmm. Maybe we play Spitfire. Let's go to combat, attack. Spitfire is so high upside. Spitfire, I think, potentially just wins us a game next turn. Play Spitfire. Spitfire with one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think, like, just make Chandra tokens attack. All right, opponent has Deputy of Detention, so they're not dead yet. Let's see what they take. Takes, ca ooh, takes Cavalcade. Well, we will fry the Deputy, get back Cavalcade. Go attacking. Not lethal, but still a lot of damage. Ping, grow, ping, grow. Opponent. Down to six. And they gotta answer stuff again, and we got Heartfire in hand. Swamp. Maybe we're just too fast. Maybe we're just too fast for the Yarok. Rejuvenator. Oh. Oh, that should be game. That should be game. That should easily be game. Pony gains a life, y'all. Yeah. Uh yeah, let's just go to combat. Attack. Ping, ping, grow, grow. And dead. And dead. Huh. Well, I guess if uh, you want to prepare for rotation, maybe budget cavalcade's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, if it can compete this well pre-rotation, uh, it's got to be even better post-rotation, you would think. Like, in theory, at least. And we just crushed a lot of really good decks in standard with, with a post-rotation deck. Huh. All right. Uh, wow. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about rotation-proof mono red cavalcade in standard? And the deck's legit. I mean, we went 5-0 and in our matches. We played Bass Game Shift. We played Esper Control. We played Teamer Nexus. We played the Yarok deck that's kind of catching on Yarok Field or whatever. Uh, Bant Reclamation deck. So we played some of the current best decks in standard. Some of the current most expensive decks in standard. And even with our kind of handicap of not having like Blood Sun in the sideboard for Scape Shift, we were still able to take down Scape Shift decks, Yarok decks, Field of the Dead decks, uh, Esper Control decks. So the deck felt very strong. And... That is super encouraging. Like, this deck, like we talked about in the intro, we are restricting our card pool to make sure we have all rotation-proof cards, and we are still able to very much compete on a really strict budget. Like, eight main deck rares, no mythics on Arena, $71 in paper. Like, it's really cheap. It's good right now, even though we have eight cents in standard, which means it should be even better after rotation. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, this seems like a really good option. If you're looking for a deck that is cheap, super cheap, on arena and in paper something that's going to survive rotation uh and still be competitive now like i think you could take this to your fnm or play as we did on arena on the ladder and win games with it win prizes grind out rewards uh it's going to be good enough to do that now and should be even better after rotation in a few more weeks so all around uh the deck is super sweet and super legit and it felt really really strong so yeah i mean if you like a different take on Bono Red. If you like getting aggro, if you like the weird combo finish, Shadow Spitfire, so scary in this deck, you just like attacking, getting in damage, this feels like a really solid build, and honestly, 
uh, as far as being a post-rotation build, I'm not sure if I would change a single card. Like, if you want a 100% rotation-proof deck, I would probably just snag this exactly as is, play it for the next five weeks or whatever until rotation hits, uh, maybe even less by the time this goes up, and then you have a deck that's good to go for week one at your FNM without spending any more money. Maybe you'll get some upgrades from Throne of Eldraine. Even if not, it still should be a really legit deck. So, yeah, rotation-proof bottom red cavalcade. I was really impressed. The deck is sweet. It is fun if you like aggro decks. It has that combo twist to it, and it's really good. So, anyway, that's been our budget magic for this week. Rotation-proof Mono Red Cavalcade for Standard. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.